Welcome to episode two of this DP Animation Maker series. Today, I will show you how to animate Christmas images. Like in this example where I animated the elf toy, the candle, the Christmas lights, and added some snow. I generated this image using Comfy UI and Flux. And you can get it from Discord for free. To make it easier for me to move things without affecting the background, I created a version with only the background by removing the elf. You can use InPainting, I used Photoshop's generative fill for this. I also made a separate version for the elf, the same size as the background, but with a transparent background. Now, let's open DP Animation Maker. Go to Change Background and import the Christmas image, or you can test it with your own images. Next, it's time to add the elf. I'll click on the Import button, then select Open Image, and choose the elf image. Here, you can add frame animations if you want. If you have an animated character or something similar, you can add all the frames here. But for now, I'll use this single PNG image. After that, I click Continue. Now, you'll see multiple animation templates. We want the elf to stay in the same place. But for other animations, you might want to use options like Rotation Object, Exploding Object, Image Scrolling, which can be on a path or loop, or you can choose Flow or even Swarm. Play around with these to come up with new animation ideas. I'll select Still Object because I want it to stay in place, then click Finish Import. Go to File, then click Save Project. Give it a name and click Save. Like with any project, it's a good idea to save frequently. Now we have our first layer, which is the elf. I want to add some animation that affects the elf, like moving the hand. You can use the Navigator Rectangle to move to the area you want, Next, let's add a brush animation. Click on the brush icon, then select the bend brush, which we use to bend objects. Click on apply selected animation. And now the bend brush appears in the animation section. I call it layers because it looks like layers in Photoshop. For the bend tool, the first thing I do is go to the effect center. This will give you a center point, which acts as a pivot. The bend center will be this point. So if I wanna move the arm, I can place the center, for example, right on the elbow. Now, when I paint with that brush, the arm will move up and down in a rotation motion, like how we usually move our arms. But we have our first problem. The arm disappeared. This happened because the elf is on a transparent background, and in the motion properties, it's set to apply the animation only to the background. In some cases, you may want the whole scene to move, but in this case, I want to animate only the previous layer. What is the previous layer? Well, the elf is just below the bend brush. So now it will affect only the elf. As you can see, the arm starts to move slowly. If I increase the speed, it will move a little faster. Since the background is transparent, I can paint around the movement area to give it enough space to bend. In the bend settings, I want the bend to be set to zero in this case. So the arm moves like a hole, not just bending like a plant or something. For speed, you can adjust it using the slider from 1 to 100, but you can also type in larger numbers. For example, if I set it to 200, it will move faster. And if I set it to 2000, it will move very fast. This gives you more control over the slider limit. I think I'll leave it at 150. Now, the arm moves from the elbow, but I also want to move it from the shoulder so it doesn't look too robotic. I can add another animation by either clicking on the brush icon or using the plus sign. I'll add another bend brush, click apply animation, and close the window. Now we have this new animation on top. The first thing I do is go to the effect center and move the point to the shoulder. Now when I paint, I run into the same issue, so I need to change the apply animation setting to previous layer. I'll paint over the area to include the entire arm. You can enable the highlight option for the mask so you can see where you've painted and where you haven't. This way, the area you paint will be affected. Next, let's change some motion properties. I will increase the speed and set it to the same value as the previous brush, 150. I also set the bend to zero, so the entire arm moves, not just the bending part. As you can see, we now have the first bend motion and the second one, so we can create more complex movements. I keep painting to include all the areas I wanna move, and you can use the eraser tool if there are parts you don't want to move. Play with the settings until you find something you like. When you combine multiple brushes, like in this case, even if the first time you painted it looked fine,
The second bend brush might move at a further distance, causing some unnatural movement on the edges. For example, the top part of the elf's red glove might look a bit off. To fix this, I can expand the area that the brush affects so that it includes the entire arm, preventing any stretching. This way, the movement stays smoother and more natural. I think it looks good now. Let's add another animation using the same bend brush. I'll quickly move the effect center and place it where the neck is. Now, using the brush, I'll paint the head. I'll change the Apply Animation setting to Previous Layer to ensure it affects only the head. I'll make sure to paint the entire head or even a bit more around it to capture the full area of movement. Next, I'll adjust the bend to a value that works for me. I'll also change the size of the brush to fit the subject I'm painting. There are two amplitude settings that control how far the bend will go. If it's close to zero, the bend will be subtle, but you can increase it to bend as much as you need. After a few adjustments, I'll leave these settings for now. Let's add one more last bend brush and repeat the steps. You may have noticed that I started animating from the outer extremities to the center, starting with the hand, then the elbow, followed by the shoulder, from the head, and then moving to the body. This approach works well because if you start animating in reverse, like from the elbow, the entire arm will move. This makes it harder to paint the moving hand because the other parts of the arm might interfere with the movement. By starting from the extremities and moving inward, you have more control over the individual movements. The software is quite easy to use. You just have to get creative with the tools it offers. Paint with an animation brush, explore the settings, and adjust them to make them work for your project. The key is experimenting with different options until you achieve the desired result. Let's add a different brush this time, one that we use for the candle. I will use the heat distortion brush, click apply, and then zoom in until we can see the candle's flame. You can adjust the brush to be a little larger than the flame. This time we want to paint only the size of the flame as we are painting on the background. Since the candle is not on a transparent background, it will affect the entire image. There are only three settings here. I usually start by adjusting the granularity to control how the animation affects the flame. A high value moves a large portion of the flame, while a low value moves smaller portions or creates little waves. Next, the strength setting affects how intense the effect is. And for speed, you can either stop, slow it down to a more subtle effect, or make it go faster. I will keep adjusting the settings and try to make it look more natural. This should work for this episode, but if you want to perfect it, you can study real videos of candles and observe how the flame moves. That way, you can get a better understanding of the natural motion and apply it to your animation for even more realism. Let's try a different brush this time, the light brush. Apply the selected animation and close the window. Now, I want to make the Christmas lights flicker. Adjust the brush size and start painting on the Christmas lights. Go to the settings and you can increase the strength to make the effect more visible. For the type, you can try pulsations, which I often use. The random setting will make the flickering random, but for now, let's stick with pulsation and paint over the area you want the light to pulsate. Now that I like the settings, I'll start painting half of the lights on the tree. For the other half, I'll add a different brush to create some variation so not all the lights flicker at the same time. You can change the color but this depends on what is in the background. If it's light or dark, the effect will vary. You can increase the strength further, but it won't affect the color too much because of the blending mode. If I change it to normal, you can see the color more clearly. Try different settings and colors to see what works for the type of light you want, whether it's neon lights or just some light dots in your scene. I'll finish painting the remaining lights, so half of them are done. Let's add a second brush using the same light brush. Change the settings and brush size, then start painting to finish all the remaining Christmas lights. To make it even more realistic, you can also paint some light on the reflection in the Christmas globe. I'll play with the speed settings until I see the lights alternating, like having one light flicker first, then the next. After painting the rest of the lights, I'll check to make sure there aren't any lights left unpainted. All right, the lights look nice now. So what's missing? Maybe some snow. Let's click on the Add Animated Objects button 
and in the list we have two types of snow. There's an extra pack that includes more snowflakes, but let's stick with the default for now. The snowflakes are quite small for this scene, so we can increase the size. If we want, we can delete the animation by clicking on the X next to it. Now let's add snow number two and increase its size. You can also freeze the snowflakes in time like in the matrix effect, but I want to add some speed, just not too fast, to give it a calm winter feel. Next, you can adjust the count to add a lot of snowflakes or just a few. In the color properties, you can add a subtle color, like a light blue, or make the snowflakes more transparent by adjusting the translucency. For the motion direction, you can set it to go up like a surreal effect, but for a more natural look, let's set it at an angle. Since our elf is looking in that direction, we can make the snow fall to the left. For the amplitude, you decide how big the zigzag motion of the snowflakes will be. You can also adjust how frequently the zigzag motion occurs. Then, in the boundaries, you can decide the edges of where the snow will appear. If I zoom out, I can drag the corners to make it snow only in specific areas, like maybe just outside a window. But in this case, I want the snow to cover the entire scene. Let me try a few more settings really quick to see what works best for this snow. Then it's almost done. There is one more thing I do sometimes to add light to the lamp or even this candle. I'm not sure if it will work for this candle, but let me try it. Go to Add Animated Objects. Here we have the flicker flame effect. One is purple, giving it a more magical feel, and version two might work in this case. We have this point that we can drag to place the flame where we want it. You can put it on the tree, but let's avoid setting the tree on fire for now. I'm adding it over the candle's flame. You can increase or decrease the size to fit your needs and move it around until it looks right. The flame might be a little tall for this effect, but I wanted to show you this for future projects. Now, the flicker flame is on top of all the other animations. I can use the arrow to move it beneath the heat distortion brush so that the heat affects the flame as well. For the apply animation of the heat distortion, I want it to apply to the whole scene. I usually select another layer so the cross disappears and I can see the effect better. You can play with the colors. Sometimes you can get a really nice magical look. So feel free to experiment with different colors. You can also adjust the brightness of the flame or tweak the flicker effect. Now you've got the idea, so I'll stop having so much fun or this tutorial will get too long. Don't forget to save the project. Go to export and select export animation to MP4 format. Give it a name and save it. Then for the slider, move it to the maximum quality if you want the best results. For the resolution, I will choose custom so it matches the size of my background image, which is a 2K image. I will include it in the Discord channel. For the duration, I will set it to 30 seconds. Once everything looks good, I can click export. If you go to the Pixarama Discord channel, the link is in the header of my YouTube or in description, you can scroll down and go to the AI2 Play Resources channel. There, you can download the images and start practicing, just like in this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the AI2 Play YouTube channel. As you probably know by now, Pixaroma is my main channel, where I share AI tutorials, and it has a large community of over 6,000 members on Discord, thanks to everyone who has joined. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and a comment to help me grow the channel. This way, I can potentially monetize it and create even more tutorials for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.